So the title uh, was Choose the Better Resurrection. Sorry, there it is. And that would imply, of, of course, that there's got to be more than one because if you have to make a choice, there must be more than one. And, you know, just to start with Jesus being resurrected, obviously that's the, what we celebrate. It goes all the way back to the Passover and the Old Testament and our Easter, if you were raised Catholic like I was. Um, you know, we lost the understanding of the resurrection because it turned into commercialized products like chocolate Easter bunnies and all this. But let me tell you, Paul was very clear that without the resurrection, your faith is in vain, right? The cross is important, but without the resurrection, the cross wouldn't have mattered. He didn't defeat death on the cross. He defeated death when he came out of the tomb and he was alive. And that same spirit that we already quoted earlier is alive in us. You should be grateful for that. So what am I talking about? Like, how could there be a choice between two resurrections? And that's what I'm going to try to get to. The, the text for this is from Hebrews 11. I'm sure a lot of you have really studied Hebrews 11. I know Easter did because she went to Faith Fellowship and was a leader there. And, and it's the Hall of Faith chapter, right? It's the Hall of Fame for all the amazing people in the Bible for, right from the beginning, by faith, one after another, after another. And at this part, it's getting close to the middle, to the end of the chapter, He's saying, women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Okay, so it is a scriptural concept, and maybe we unpack it for a minute to think about the culture today, where many of us would feel like there's been pressure on our freedoms in America. Right? My father would have been 100 years old this year. He served in World War II. He went in as an enlisted man and came out a lieutenant in the Army, right? What, what was his big training? He helped his father with the garbage business. But he worked six days a week. He, he understood leadership, right? Like he got trained the hard way, the school of hard knocks growing up. And they saw leadership in him when he was there. It wasn't, he didn't brag about this. We would just talk about it around the table. And they never thought twice about serving their country. It wasn't a question that you have the American flag on the altar, right? And this one is the flag of Israel, just so you know where our roots are. But nobody questioned that if, if America was in a war that you would enlist. Anybody see the movie Hacksaw Ridge? Well, there's, there's, when, when he goes on trial, uh, without going into too much detail, I don't know if you remember this fact, but he said in his town where he grew up, the people that couldn't enlist because they were rejected for their medical, some of them committed suicide. Because it was such an honor to serve the country that if they couldn't do it, life wasn't worth living. How far have we come from that, right? So we better be careful that, that we don't lose our freedoms. And look, I'm not trying to get political and tell you who to vote for. I'm just saying, like, know the, the times and the seasons. And we're here for such a time as this to take a stand, okay? So they might obtain a better resurrection. What could that mean? It means if you'll renounce your faith, we'll let you live. And it's like... That's not a good resurrection to live the rest of my life knowing that I compromised on the biggest thing that I believe in my life. So I will let you kill me other than renouncing my faith because I got to be true to who I know is true. And by the way, his resurrection is way better than any deal you could ever give me for whatever time I have left in this world, okay? So that's much more the theme in the, in the New Testament was not comfortable Christianity. They were under persecution because they were countercultural, and And the beauty of it is they shined so brightly that the other people wanted what they had because they were ethical people and they, they cared about each other. When, when the plague would come, this is historical fact here, when the plagues would come, all the wealthy people would leave the town because they had the resources and the Christians would be going into the town to try to help the sick people, sick people to pray for them. And everybody's like, well, what, what, what do they believe? that they would do that. Aren't they afraid? Well, no, they, their fear of the Lord is what showed them where they should go. So basically, the, the women that, that were tortured, or the men, it doesn't really say, it's part of that same verse, but the ones who were tortured and offered will free you if you renounce your faith. No. I choose a better resurrection than this compromised version of how you want me to live the rest of my life. And that's what people do when they go to war. It's like, you know, the country's worth fighting for. If I die, I die. But people died for me, and I'm willing to put my life on the line. I don't know how many people feel that way anymore. I'm too old to get, go in the military other than maybe as a strategist or a guitar player. 
<laughs> but I hope my sons would go. I think they would. It's a great country. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> All right, so now, you know, just give me grace for a minute, okay? This probably doesn't sound like a church uh, term, but what's an algorithm? Some of you know. I'm in finance, so I kind of lean in that direction a little sometimes. It's, the definition is a step-by-step -step procedure for solving a problem or accomplishing a goal. And what does that have to do with resurrection? Well, there's two choices that we have. And if you think about that example from Hebrews, they make an offer, and you have an algorithm that says, where are my priorities? No, I'm not taking your offer because I, I'm choosing the better resurrection. I'm not going to renounce my faith. So my algorithm says, no, I'm standing on faith. Take my life, right? We all have these in our mind. Right? We all have in our spirit, in our heart. You can remember probably before you were a Christian how different your thinking was then. And the algorithms also change over time, right? Because we get influenced by things. Life happens to us. We get older. So this is an ever-changing process. And in Romans, when it says, renew your minds, right? That's really important to renew your minds with the Word of God and the power of His Spirit. So let's just think about for a minute what this is like, and I'm not going to go through the chart, but like it's a very common term today, much more than when I was younger, that people understand that you have some kind of formula inside your spirit, man, that helps you make your decisions on, on when you say yes and no. And all those young people, right, that were just up here getting prayer, we want to help them have the biblical algorithm, right? We want the kingdom of God algorithm, not the kingdom of the world. Hmm. And that's what I wrote. Each of us has ever-changing algorithms that drive. Aren't you glad God renewed your mind? Man, when I got saved, I was told in the, in the world that because I drank so much alcohol, my brain cells were dead and they could never be revived, right? Some of you might still think that's true, but I know for sure I got straight A's in college after, after I got saved. So I was fooling somebody. Um, so, you know, he takes the dead thing and brings it back to life. Not just when we die and go to heaven. Now! Right, this life, he's a very present help. So in James, let's just think of this as probably it was an easy example for me to think of because I've taught on this. What would the algorithm look like that James, which is the brother of Jesus, he's saying, let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. That's for those of us that said this, God. Why did you let this happen to me? <laughs> and it's because when I was at work, there was this woman who got hired who was really friendly in the uh, break room by the coffee machine. And it's like, God, why did you send her? And, it's, and he's like, there's also a devil. Don't forget about the devil. Right? And that's the spirit of the world. And we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Different spirit in us. How does legalism work when you're trying to help other people see the Lord? Not well. So in our being in the world but not of the world, we have to be careful that we're reflecting the real nature of Christ, not the counterfeit, I guess. I mean, that's what Jesus would have said about the Pharisees. They were a counterfeit version of the leadership of the church, right? He, that's the people he was the most upset with who focused on the law only and didn't love people like we sang, right? So that's a problem for all of us. Any one of us could get religious, and you know what rigor mortis is? Stiff. Oh, I want to be just like you. That's what legalism does. It locks us into thinking, narrow-minded thinking. Now, I'm not saying don't know the word, right? And I do know that God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is the word. But I think sometimes we cut ourselves too short and, and instead of praying about what God wants to say to this specific person in this specific situation, we just kind of default to, well, the Bible says. And they're like, who cares? I don't believe in the Bible. How about living it in front of them first, right? Okay, there you go. So thank you. See, if you say amen, I move faster, so thanks. <laughs> God cannot be tempted by evil. So that's one of the rules of engagement that James is trying to help us understand. When we're coming out of the world and we're going into this different kingdom of God. It's like, don't blame God for temptation. He doesn't do that. I sure needed to know that. 
In ver verse 14, he breaks it down into the algorithm. He tells us how this works, what the linkage is. And he says, each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. And there's many examples we could give, but obviously the sexual uh, temptation piece is something that most of us can relate to. I'm sure all of us can, because it's so common and it's so rampant. And, and may, many CEOs in the last five years have been kicked off their companies because of indiscretions. And we should say, good. They shouldn't be allowed to do that stuff in there. That's injustice, and God hates injustice. And women aren't supposed to be mistreated. Nobody's supposed to be mistreated. So if people are using their power to mistreat people, we pray that gets exposed. But what's going to cause them to change? It's not the worldview of the world. The only way they're going to change is here. On the kingdom side, they got to ask for help. They got to recognize it's a sin, and they don't think it's a sin, because that's what that's what that thinking does. It's like there there are absolutely no absolutes. <laughs> Contradiction right there, right? You're, you're saying it, but because no, I don't want you to tell me how to live my life. You can't draw boundaries on my behavior. If I want to be a woman today, I don't. Just so you know, but I you know I should be allowed to say that or whatever. I don't have to get specific here, but here's the formula. Here's the algorithm. We first are tempted, and then the next step is to be drawn away by our own desires and enticed. That word enticed is like seduction. There's something about it. And the Sanfords that we use, the book Transformation in the Inner Man or Transforming the Inner Man, talk about spiritual adultery always happens before physical adultery. So there's some chemistry going on, and you're starting to hear that voice, and you're starting to remember the smell of the perfume, and you're being drawn to that thing. It's not always the women, I know, sorry. I, I better change my example here, right? <laughs> and then when desire has what? Well, that implies an act happens, something happens, and it conceives, so Something's got to be given birth to, then it gives birth, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. There's your algorithm of the world. But we still have to apply this knowledge because he was writing to Christian. Wasn't he? He was the leader of the church. Oops. And that was his sermon to say just because you're Christian doesn't mean you still can't sin. And if somebody does sin as a Christian, it doesn't mean they weren't a Christian. It's called spiritual warfare. I hope nobody here thinks you can't sin because you're a Christian. Because you're living in a bubble, if that's the case. Because any of us could sin at any time. So, I mean, one good prayer point is to pray for me and Trisha that we stay lined up with God, right? Because if you smite the shepherd, the, the flock scatters. So I'm not trying to milk out any extra prayers here. I'm trying to teach you what the Bible says is important. So one way or another, there's these algorithms that go on in people's lives. I don't want to belabor the point. But I just tried to think in, in my kind of finance way of a spreadsheet here. And, and on the left side, it says algorithms of man. On the right side, algorithms of God, right? So we, we all started on the left side of the chart. The day you were born in the hospital, you were not saved. So you were born into the world. You were born into sin. You didn't have a choice. It was factory installed. Sin. First birth, but then the Bible says there's a second birth, right? So that's what being born again means. It's a second birth. And by the way, I could send you the slides if you want. I see people taking pictures, but we'll send them to you if you want. But go ahead, take your pictures too. <laughs> so then the human nature comes to us when we're born in the flesh. But then on the right side, it says there's a second nature where we're born of the flesh, which I put as water in, in the language in the Gospel of John, and the Spirit, right? Because you remember when Jesus was talking, unless a man is born of water and the Spirit. So I'm taking that to mean water is my mother. Her water broke before I was born, the natural realm. But then there's a second birth. Of course that had to happen first, but now there's a second birth in the Spirit. Right? And we would include the Word of God and Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It's, it's, it's that whole side of understanding there are not just natural laws, there's also spiritual laws. And, and the people that don't get saved and don't have that spirit have a really hard time understanding the spiritual laws. We'll get there. This side is chaos. And, and if you hear any of the atheists on YouTube right now, they're basically saying that we can reject everything that's been taught before us, we can only use science now, and we'll all figure out how we should live our lives. 
And anybody with any wisdom is going, nice try. No, bad idea. Don't reject the wisdom of thousands of years. This is the year 5782 on the Hebrew calendar. So that's, that's a long time. There's a lot of wisdom in this book. Don't reject it, even if you don't fully understand it. There's a reason it's the most popular book every year. Because it's true. <laughs> nope, I got a better way. Wow. Pride goes before a fall. One side darkness, the other side light. One side sin and death. We're born into sin and death. This part people don't like. Here it's got to be crucifixion and then resurrection. There's no resurrection without crucifixion. Say ouch. <laughs> and you can't crucify yourself. Okay? You, you got to be part of a community. What would you do? You would, you would get on the cross and you'd nail your feet in and then you'd nail one arm in, but then what? Like, we need each other. You get it? We need each other. You can't be an island here. You don't just watch online all the time. You got to look people in the eye. How many times you walk in a restaurant, everybody's looking at their phone? The whole restaurant, nobody's talking to each other. What? That's not a good idea, folks. Let's look each other in the eye and talk. And there's an off button on here. I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, turn it off. <laughs> it's like an addiction, man. Get away from me. <sighs> so anyway, I love my phone, but I'm going to leave it there for now. Trisha will text me once in a while while I'm preaching. <laughs> Words of wisdom. <laughs> So you have the world's kingdom over here and God's kingdom here. Not just when we die and go to heaven, but it's available to us now. You all have access to this kingdom here. Is it easy? No, because you have to get crucified first. Things have to die. We don't fix what used to work in the algorithm here. We erase that algorithm. We come over here and he gives us a new one. Right? That's how you get saved. You realize this was bankrupt. What I was doing was bankrupt. Was I having fun? Yeah. Was I good at it? Too good at it. I should have been killed half the time. But now it's like start, start over. You know, the first church I went into, like, they were, what, what, what can we do with this guy? Well, let's stick him in children's ministry with the guitar. Maybe he'll, maybe he can help the kids learn the songs. It's like, I didn't even know the song. So, I mean, come from that background. Um, so, I'm sorry. I don't mean to ramble, but there's, this is really important. I'm going to go through that chart a little bit more. Uh, sorry. And, and one is called, this one's the father of lies, and God is called the father of lights in the Bible. Boy, that's a good one. Over here, rebellion, obedience, injustice, justice, understanding natural laws over here, and then there are all the spiritual laws. Paul says, again, if we use sex as, as an example of sin, you know, common sin, don't you know that when you become one with another person, you take that person into you? That's what he says, right? Second Corinthians, I believe. And he's saying, when you separate from that person, part of you goes with them. And part of them stays with you. Fragmentation. They don't understand. Oh, no, over here, it's like, it's just a natural act. Two consenting adults. Oh, no, there's a whole spiritual dimension. Every country song is brokenhearted over something, right? I cried in my beer. But I'll have another beer because that'll help. I don't know. I don't think so. That's only been tried for about 5,000 years. Boone's Farm. Anybody remember the hangover from Boone's Farm? Oh, help us, Lord. Understand only natural laws, uh, spiritual laws, and then, right? I mean, every day on this side, when I was, before I was saved, it was me, me, me. You know, one, two, three, me, me, me. And then you come on this side, and it's like, oh, wow. There's so much more than just me, right? Sa Self-sacrificing, rooted and grounded in God's love. In the world, I was driven by what other people thought. Now, my identity is now as a child of God. I, I care about whether you like me or not, but I care way much more about what God thinks of me, right? And I'll, I'll just send that one to you because I want to get into the scriptures. Galatians 5.24, those who are Christ have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. The, uh, the, the Navigator's Ministry is another one of those uh, campus ministries. And the first, they, they're big on scripture memorization. The first verse they ask uh, their people to, to, to memorize is Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. 
Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faithfulness, that's how I say it, the faithfulness of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Right? Like right there, crucified. We don't like this word because we like to be comfortable. And crucifixion and comfortable just don't go together. But anybody who's ever defeated a, a demon in your life or, or addictions or if, even if you serve uh, in, in sports, right? I mean, you don't just, you can't stay home all week. You go to practice every day. And, and you don't just get to, to you get a free pass to just show up and play the game. You've got to be part of your team. And if somebody else is staying out late and partying, you get in their face. Like, we need you, man. Don't come in hungover. We, you got to bring your best to the game, right? There's nothing comfortable about success. If, if you want to take the better road, it's going to take some work and discipline. But unless the Lord builds the house, we know over here, we're just going to labor in vain, right? Okay, still with me? I'm not getting a lot of amens. Okay, good. <laughs> That's called fishing for a compliment. Uh, Colossians 3.5. Therefore, put to death. Hmm. There it is again. Put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness. He's talking to Christians. Yes, but if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. That's true. You are. But that old flesh will try to resurrect. See the difference? Bring it to the cross. Die. He resurrects a new man over here. But I live my life right here. And this is always pulling at me. That old nature is always pulling at me. Well, I tried praying for people and it doesn't work, so I don't think I'm just going to just take medicine or whatever, and that's fine. But, you know, all the different ways that that can play itself out. Being in a group of people that are passionate about serving the Lord, who, who study the Bible, who read often and, and are current in the spirit, boy, that's some of the best advice you can get. And they don't have any agenda. We're, the agenda is that we all fulfill the calling on our lives completely, Fully, not just in part. So there's just so much to say. Uh, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? But I'm going to heaven. God's not an Indian giver. I got saved. He can't take away my salvation, I've heard people say. Another day's topic. As long as I get in, I just want to make the cut that my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. One guy calls that vampire Christianity. Just enough blood to get me into heaven, but let me live my life the way I want over here. Ooh, sorry. No, we we're not going to continue in sin, that grace may abound. How shall we who die to sin le live any longer in it? Well, the how is because we get enticed by our desires. And then it conceives and it brings forth death. It's just a wrong algorithm. We don't always remember that we die to sin. And, and it's going to keep reminding you, okay, that thousands of testimonies I've heard that when people got saved, some old girlfriend calls up, or it wasn't, in my case, it wasn't even a girlfriend, it was a girl I wanted to be my girlfriend, and never gave me two cents of time. She's like, a friend of hers calls and says, hey, Pete, uh, Grace was asking about you. I'm like, what? She never even looked at me. <laughs> it's because I got saved. I'm telling you, like, the devil goes on high alert. Take them down now. Take them down. Get the big weapons. <laughs> Verse 3. Or don't you know that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus were also baptized into his death? Don't stop there because he didn't stop when he died. He resurrected. So if you were baptized into his death, therefore we're buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. This is in your Bible, not a strange translation, New King James, okay? So there's nothing controversial about the algorithms here. This one's trying to pull you back. This one's trying to get you to do new habits and new ways of thinking and, and have the right motive out of love, that you're serving God out of love, not out of that slavery mindset. You know, Jack Frost wrote a book called From Slavery to Sonship understanding that you're a, a beloved son of your father in heaven and it's not just about what you do that makes him happy it's about who you are that makes him happy and that's the algorithm on God's side is to say think of yourself first as my son first as my daughter please me and everything else will fall into line 
For if we've been united together in his likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So what does that look like now in this life? If, if it's a resurrection, it's, it's free from drugs. And if you, like me, I was 25 when I got saved. I had tried so many different ways to stop drinking. My friends never believed me because I would go back. And then different things, right? And then I finally, when I got saved, I didn't even want it anymore. So that made a really big difference. Because if I was walking by liquor stores and going, oh, no, oh, no, there's a liquor store. I'd be like, no, that would, it's really hard to win that one because then you're trying to do it in your willpower. Right. It's not your willpower. I'm not looking at my phone. I just don't want to step on it. <laughs> uh, you walk by the liquor store and you go, oh, my God, I didn't even want to go in. Hallelujah. And then you look at the name of the store and it says Spirits Unlimited. <laughs> what? It's a whole chain. You've got that right. It's a chain, man. I'm not trying to condemn anyone. I'm going to keep going because uh, it's getting late. I'm sorry. There's a lot of scriptures. But I'll do a part two. Thank you. Give that man a raise. <laughs> so, okay. So, Ephesians 4. I mean, there's so much in the Bible about this. But 19 says... This is how we used to be. We were past feeling, right? We were past feeling. We had so many hurts and scars and abuse that we experienced and difficult situations. And, and eventually, you kind of bail on the system and just say, oh, well, this is kind of my lot in life, right? And, and that should break our hearts when, when we meet people that, that are in that situation. They don't really know the value and the treasure that they have in God's eyes. Giving themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but you have not so learned that in Christ. Okay, so that old life has a new algorithm now, and it's not perfect because I'm not perfect, and there, are, there will be times that I get tempted to go back in this direction, but my goal is to keep my eyes this way, to move off the left side of that chart that I gave you to the, to the new side. Will I get pulled back sometimes? Yes. We're not perfect, but, but will there be a reset? Yes. Will I be surrounded by people who are trying to help me? Yes. Huge, hugely important. If indeed you've heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, you'll put off concerning your former conduct, that old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you may put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. And man, you know, like, you think over on this side, after I got saved and I'm hanging out with my friends, and they're like, yeah, right, you're a Christian. What, did you get busted? And you're like, you know what a narc is? That's what they thought. You must have got busted, and now you're going to turn us in so you can lower your jail term kind of thing. Like, no, I really got, I really got saved. And, and like, well, you don't do drugs anymore? No. You don't sleep with your girlfriend anymore? No. And they would go like this, well, I'll see you later. Because that was just so far out of their worldview that they would mock me. And I understood why, but it didn't matter to me because I was just so happy. I had so much money in my wallet because I wasn't spending it on drugs. <laughs> so just bear with me for a minute on this one. This is commentary. Redemption isn't merely forgiveness of sin's guilt, right? That's that vampire Christianity. As long as I make the cut, as long as I get in, it's on the, I'm under the blood. What about your life now? Are you flourishing? Are you prospering? Are you growing into everything he wants you to be? If not, we, we want to tell you that's how you should look at this. Because it's a way better way. It's kingdom thinking. Redemption isn't merely forgiveness of your sin's guilt. So our souls can go to heaven someday. Our true hope is to be free from physical death just as Jesus was raised from the dead. So if you're where I was, the addiction was trying to take my life. I got delivered from that, so he gave me a resurrected body that wasn't doing drugs anymore. So it's not just when we die. And then the hope of bodily resurrection stands against the expectation that the souls are just going to escape from their mortal body and float up into heaven. Paul would disagree. Really study him. It says he sees resurrection as new creation. Old man, new man. Put off the old, put on the new. This one keeps changing as you keep refining that algorithm and somebody tells you, I see this about you. 
You're like, really? I never saw that about myself. No, the Lord showed me this is what you should be doing. And you try it and it starts working. And all of a sudden you're getting up with a hope in the morning where you didn't have hope before because you found out who you really are. You're not trying to wear Saul's armor. You got your slingshot. Don't say that around Trish. <laughs> Believers don't have to wait until the future experience, I'm sorry, the future to experience this spirit-enabled life. Because living in obedience to God through the spirit now is a foretaste of the total experience when he comes back. We have a down payment of the spirit now that's very interactive. If you don't work with him, he ain't going to force himself on you. But if you ask him to come in, boy, will he come in. But really the big deal is when Jesus comes back the second time. And there's a verse in the Bible that says that what we're doing now is going to count for then. Not a works mentality, but it's a mindset. And I don't want to be a vampire Christian. Just enough blood to get me in. No. Let's go higher than that. 1 Corinthians 15 in the message. You plant a dead seed, and soon there is a flourishing plant. You know, know what I'm talking about, right? Seeds are considered dead until you put them in the ground, and then they, they become awakened. And they found seeds from Egypt, I think, in the tombs that were like 5,000 years old. And in the right conditions, that, that dead thing comes to life. And we have so much aging and problems that happen and health problems. People will say, oh, poor Joe, he's just a shadow of his former self, right? Well, when we get over here, your best day, you're just going to be, that was a shadow of your future self, right? So what about now? Like, we could be doing better if, if, we, if we make the attempt to try. Now, some people think, well, that's a works mentality. No, the works part is about salvation, right? Once you're saved, there are disciplines that could help you, and there's bad behavior that could ruin you. Right? So this is just smart thinking. If, if being a Christian is really the most important thing to me, then there's certain things that I should make sure I do and other things I don't do. How about pray? How about ask for help? How about read your Bible? How about listen to worship songs? Those are all pretty good. Not too controversial. Plant a dead seed, and soon there's a flourishing plant. There's no visual likeness between the seed and the plant. You'd never guess what a tomato would look like by looking at a tomato seed. I love that. If, this is why my friends were so shocked. They're like, yeah, right, you're a pastor. Come on. I was born at night, but not last night. Right? So they were only knowing the tomato seed. My mother was told to pray for your son and picture him with his hands lifted up in worship. And I was working as a bouncer in a bar at Fort Lauderdale Strip at the time. I was about as far away from my hands up in worship as you could be. But that came to pass. So, boy, don't go by the seed. Go by the fruit, right? This image of planting a dead seed and raising a live plant is a mere sketch at best. Perhaps it will help in approaching the mystery of the resurrection body. Um, I'm winding down now. Okay, guys? Thank you. So maybe it'll help us when we approach the mystery of this resurrection body but only if you'll keep in mind that when we're raised, we're raised for good, to live forever, alive forever. So every time you gain a victory in this earth over fear, over addiction, over whatever that, you know, the Bible calls them besetting sins, right? And we, we have full-time staff members. This is pretty much all they do all day, every day, every week is, is meet with people and try to help them get through overcoming these issues. And when we can get to the root, and, and eliminate that root, the fruit goes away. That bad fruit goes away. And that's not psychology, okay? Psychology tries to build up self. Jesus said, crucify self. And when you can get to the root of the problem and there's no root anymore, there won't be any bad fruit. How many know you're all producing fruit every day? Some good, some not so good. So let's just keep inspecting our fruit. The corpse that's planted is no beauty, but when it's raised, it's glorious. 
So like we show up and we're like broken and I don't know what to do. Would you help me? I'm willing to be a Christian. Yes. I have no idea what to do. I don't know how to read the Bible. Nothing. No background in it. It doesn't matter. You cross that threshold and now you're, you're stepping into a kingdom of people that want to help you. And what's the exact formula? Nobody knows because you're different than anybody else who's ever lived. But there's certain things that you know for sure that you have to learn that there is such a thing as sin. And it's not just anything goes. There are boundaries on our behavior that God says. That makes perfect sense that he would do that for us. And then, God, you got to ask him for the strength not to sin. And if you do sin, that, that he'll forgive you. So we understand that we're forgiven for no reason. We didn't earn it. You can't earn your, your forgiveness. There's nothing you could have done to make him love you enough to do that. And that's one of the hardest things that, for new Christians to believe is, why would he love me? Nobody else I ever met loves me unconditionally. And it's because you're his child. And he wants to take you out of that sin-stained life and let you grow into who he called you to be in this life. That's resurrection. So see when I say you get to choose your resurrection? You can either choose to listen to the enticement of the flesh, even as a Christian, even as a pastor. It doesn't matter. There's no complete inoculation from sin. They ain't going to make a vaccine that could do that. It's the B-I-B-L-E and the Spirit of God. But also it's this. It's being together with other people. Really important. The community of the church is really important. Okay, you know that. I believe that already. We get put in the ground weak, but we come up powerful. The seed sown is the natural, but the seed grown is the supernatural. That's for now, right? That's for now. The new you, my, my wife's mom got saved because of what happened to her daughter. She knew it was real. They had some battles. And whatever happened to you, Trisha, I don't know, but you're like a different daughter but I like you. <laughs> Whatever you did, it's working. What was it? You know, I shouldn't say it exactly that way, but she then lived with us for the last 15 years of her life in Basking Ridge here. And the girls, Trisha's sisters are here. They're, they'd say there was a whole side of our mother that we never saw after she got saved. There was a joy and a fun about her. It wasn't that heaviness that she had to live with here. Like when she first moved in, she's like, well, how much do I have to give you for the telephone bill? I'm not going to charge you. What are you talking about? How much are you going to charge me for cooking me dinner? You wouldn't think of charging me for cooking me dinner. But, boy, I'll tell you, you could have paid for that food. It was that good. And she's like, really? You're covering my phone bill? You're covering my electric bill? She couldn't believe it. And that released this whole other side of her. She was a comedian in hiding. She had a really good, right? And they're like, we never saw her laugh growing up. They didn't know she was funny because that weight of the heaviness of her life was just so strong. I'm almost done, I promise. Same seed, same body, but what a difference from when it goes down into physical mortality to when it is raised up into spiritual immortality. This is the Message Bible. The first man was made out of the earth, and people since then, then are earthy, that, that's not a compliment in case you were wondering. The second man was made out of heaven, and people now can be heavenly. Look at whoever you're sitting next to and say, that's my prayer for you, that you will be more heavenly. Could you pray for me that I would be more heavenly? <laughs> and pray for me too, church. Danny, I pray for Danny. He prays for me. All right, let's stand. I hope it was good food. Thank you. Well, there's just one last part of this that I just want, I like to do it when we stand because it feels like marching orders to some degree. So, you know, in the same way that we've worked from our earthy origins, Let's embrace our heavenly end, okay? So choose your resurrection. Choose, if that voice starts calling you back into that old life of sin, it's really tempting, right? 
We get seduced. We get enticed by our desires. And James said, that thing is going to conceive. And by the time it's fully grown, it's going to bring forth death because the wages of sin is death. And it's not condemning. It's like it's just redoing the algorithm just to recognize I have a weak spot in that area. I need to surround myself with people who can help me. Because, you know, ironically, the immune system, our son is, is doing this right now. His PhD is in immunology. And he's in his fifth year. I mean, I learned way more than I thought I'd ever know about it. I'm not a scientist. But they call them T-cells. It's like they're in the shape of a cross, right? The immune system is built in the shape of the cross. So whatever that thing is that's pulling me, there's a, there's a counter in the spirit to get that to stop. It's called crucify it and be resurrected on the other side so that you can be that new creation that he called you to be. How many believe that works? Yes, we got a lot of hands going up. So that's my prayer for you to, right now. It's just whether that algorithm makes sense to you or not. It's just that however we can renew our minds to understand that we're not vampire Christians. We're not just, just getting by in life, hoping we make the cut, hoping our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. No, he comes in power. When he comes, he comes with the power to deliver you from all forms of sin, addiction, problems. And that's what resurrection is here while we're here. So Lord, I just ask you to do that for each of us that are in the building, but those that are even watching online, that we could be humbled to recognize that we don't have all the answers. And if Paul could say, I have not yet apprehended the thing which God apprehended me for, but I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling that he gave me in Christ. Lord, we say the same. Can you say that? I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ. And Lord, if there's anybody here that doesn't know you, anybody watching, anybody in the building, if this all sounds interesting, but you've never experienced it, that's why this altar is here. That you can say, you know what, I tried my old life, it didn't work, I'm willing to try something new. And there's so many people here would, would agree with me that that would be the best decision that you could ever make. Because this isn't some hokey pokey religion. This is a real relationship with a living, loving, powerful God who has the power to help you do what you can't do in your own strength. All right, so look, I was, never, I was never shy when I was in the world, so I didn't mind walking up to an altar when it was time to make that decision. It's like, I got nothing to lose. It's Bob Dylan. If you ain't got nothing, you got nothing to lose. And I, had, I reached that point. You know, that's what I heard another guy say, God's address is the end of your rope. He lives right where you are, if that's you, and you're like, I don't know what else to try. Just walk up the aisle and come to this altar right now and say, I'm willing to give my life to Christ. And you know what? If you don't like it, he'll give it back to you if you don't want his way. Can we pray, church, in case there's anybody here that doesn't know the Lord? And uh, maybe they want to come up. And maybe you, maybe you are in a backslidden condition, and that's not, there's no shame in that either. Life, life throws us some really bad hands, doesn't it? Right? So you don't know. You can't judge other people. Right? If that's you, the altar's open. It's always open. If you're trying to decide what to do, no shame. Come up to the altar. No one's going to mock you. We're going to pray with you, and we're going to help you understand what it's like to live this life. Amen? All right. Those of you that aren't coming up, that's okay. Pray for new believers. Pray for, to bring people to church that don't know the Lord. Because that's why we're here at church, right? To expand God's kingdom and expand his influence in the earth. I want to just bless you. Could you lift your hand one more time? It's 1201. I did okay. Lord, I thank you for the body of believers right here in Basking Ridge, New Jersey, on this amazing property that, that we're all here together for such a time as this, that you've given us an assignment, you've given us a purpose. We have meaning in our life because you've planted that meaning inside of us to be transformed into the image of Christ with ever-increasing glory. And I speak it over your people, Lord, that you will help us redo the algorithms that try to pull us back into that kingdom of the earth because we want to be square in the center of the kingdom of God our feet planted on the rock of Jesus Christ and I'll bless them as they go Lord to be effective ministers for you in Jesus name